I hate these stupid things. You guys have been around a block already know what that is. But for the uninitiated, that's called a crush collar. And sooner or later, one of these is gonna wreck your day. So, let me tell you what happened. Um, coming home the other night, I'm on the interstate, 70 miles an hour, cruising along, everything is good. I take my foot off the gas to coast a little bit and I start to hear the noise. I give it gas, noise goes away, perfectly quiet. Take my foot off the gas, it can only be one thing. There's only one thing that'll make that noise. The pinion nut backed off. And why did the pinion nut back off? Because this thing lost its tension. And why did it lose its tension? We'll get into all of that in a minute. So let's talk about what that is exactly. All right. This is a form of torque to yield, not fastener, but device. And what it's used for is to expedite the assembly of differentials on the assembly line, just to make it quick and fast and automated. Because the right way to set up a differential is very time consuming. To pick just the right number, the spacers and shims and whatnot, to attain just the right preload on the pinion bearings, it's time consuming and it's hit and miss and it takes, it takes accuracy. So to, to circumnavigate all of that, they came up with this, the crush collar. And all the manufacturers use them to one extent or another. All of them are a little bit different. This particular one is from a 489 case, eight and three quarter Chrysler rear. So it may not look like yours, but they all function exactly the same way. So let's talk about bearing preload and why that's important because it's not always important. The type of the type of bearings that we're talking about, you know, these, you're familiar with these, I'm sure, don't require preload, quote preload, to function correctly. But under certain circumstances, the axle housing itself, the rear end housing itself, the pumpkin or whichever part of it, under certain circumstances, like for instance, towing a heavy load at you know 70 miles an hour going uphill, the, it'll get hot. The rear end housing will get hot. And when it gets hot, it'll expand. So unless there's some preload built into the bearings, some tension on the bearings, it'll start to make noise under those circumstances. So to avoid that, that's, where the, that's why you have preload. These bearings will actually function with zero preload and, and zero, uh, zero slop. That is really what you're looking for you look, if you're doing it for like a high performance car. But let's, let's, not even, let's not go there. So the crush collar is used to expedite that situation. It's done once on the assembly line and it's done, it's not done by hand, it's done mechanically. Oh, it's automated. So the crush collar here, I'll show you how the assembly works. So here is the pinion. Here's the bearing that gets pressed onto the pinion. Then you get your crush collar. And then you got your front bearing. This is a little bit of an interference fit. Okay, so uh, obviously that's not the way it is on the car, but I don't want to go too far. I won't be able to pull this back off easily. And then you get the yoke. Come on, yoke. Then, of course, there's the washer and the nut. So, as this is being assembled at the factory, this is all put together like this, and there's slop between the bearings and the case. The nut here is tightened down, it's torqued down, until this begins to crush. As this begins to crush, it brings these bearings closer to each other and seats them into their races. And then once that's all tightened down, that's it. Never to be disturbed again without replacing this. This is a throwaway part. This is I mean, any time that the tension is released on this nut for any reason, like for instance, the pinion, the pinion seal, you got to remove the yoke. You're supposed to fish this out of there and start the procedure all over again. So here's a couple of here's a couple of disclaimers on this. Different manufacturers use different types of nuts to hold the yoke on and keep that crush collar crushed, compressed under tension. Some use a slightly oblong type of nut. Some use a nylon type of nut. Some use an interference fit type of nut. Chrysler just uses a regular fine thread nut. So as soon as 
those as soon as the play gets there, and it's not just, not just Chrysler's. This is this is actually a Dana seventy. So Ford trucks and whatnot that have the Dana type of rears, Spicer rears, Jeeps, they all have that regular thread nut. So as soon as the rear end starts to wear, as soon as the bearings start to wear or the the races start to wear, and the tension is off of the crush collar. There's nothing to hold torque on the nut anymore. And so over time, driving down the road, it'll loosen up. And that's when you get the noise. The noise actually comes from, okay, when you're accelerating, the ring gear is the cut of the ring and the pinion gear is pushing the pinion forward against this big bearing. But as soon as you let off the gas, now it goes the other way and the cut is pulling against this bearing. It's trying to drive the pinion forward, the pinion, the, the teeth forward. So that's when the noise happens. And when you're under tension, the cut of the teeth is keeping tension on this bearing. As soon as you let off, the cut on the teeth reverses and you got tension to this bearing. And if there's any slop, any play right there, that's it. That's when you get the noise. So like I says, it's a throwaway part. You're not supposed to reuse them. Anytime you break tension on that nut, on the pinion nut, remove the yoke, change the bearing, whatever it is, you're supposed to take these things out and throw them away and put a new one in, which is a step that a lot of guys don't, don't know. Or a lot of guys skip. They may know it, but they'll skip it because it's a pain. And especially getting a new crush collar started if you don't have the right equipment. Because when they put these things together at the factory, when they tighten down that pinion nut, they're not using an impact gun. It's a steady, it's a steady turn. It's a steady screw that's tightening it down. And so it crushes and it maintains that crush easy. When you try to do it with an impact gun to initiate the crush on it, it doesn't want to do it. It just fights back. The whole thing springs. And so it, it kind of defeats the purpose of the impact. You actually have to use a really long breaker bar to get them started. Or you can actually put, let me pull this back apart again. You can put this in a vise and initiate the crush in a vise. Once you've initiated the crush, they'll go fairly easily. But you don't want to go too far because if you go too far, you throw this thing away. You can't use it anymore. So what if you're working on the rear end at a time that you can't just get yourself a quick crush collar or, or it's not available for your car. Well, you can shim it because like I says, once it's been tightened, once it's been crushed, it's, you can't re-crush them. It, it, it doesn't work. So, but you can, if it's available, if it's possible, you can add a shim. So every time I, I do a rear end, I always save shims, extra shims. So this is like a 7,000, seven inch shim. So what I'm going to do on that truck, rather than replace the crush collar that's in there, I'll just take this shim and add it to the original crush collar, then the bearing, and then tighten everything down again. And that, that shim that I put in there will allow the crush collar to crush a little more and maintain that proper amount of drag. What is the proper amount of drag? They're all different. So you need to determine on the differential that you're working on what the right procedure is, what the right amount of drag is, and, and how to go about because there's many different ways. Search the forums, find out the, the, uh, the common thread, the one that fits, the one that people keep repeating over and over again concerning your particular differential, and go with that method. They're all different. I can't tell you how to do it. One size does not fit all. But generally speaking, they all do take preload, and there is a procedure for each of them. Now, we know that they'll start to go bad during normal use, normal wear, like we're experiencing with our truck out there. They'll also go bad or they're no good after the nut's been loosened. So how do you get around these things that will eventually bite you? Well, if it's, if it's available for your rear end, you can get a crush collar eliminator. Like for instance, for the Chryslers, Dr. Diff makes a crush collar eliminator. Yukon uh, makes uh, all different manufacturers make crush collar eliminators and they cover pretty much every popular rear that's out there and all the crush collar eliminator is is a sleeve just short of what the expected crush distance of a crush collar would be and then a set of shims 
So you can put this thing together and select fit shims to attain that proper amount of preload. If you're building, if you're building for, if you're looking for the last bit of performance and you don't mind a slight bit of noise when things get hot, you can set them up for zero preload, zero drag, and they'll they'll work just fine. But just remember, there's also zero play involved, so it's time consuming to get it just right. If by some chance there is no crush collar eliminator for your particular rear end, you can make one. It's not that big of a deal. A length of pipe or tubing, approximately the right length, and then shims. Uh, where you find your shims is where you find your shims. You gotta go hunting for them sometimes. But you can you can do that. Like for instance, I've done it with the eight, and three, eight seven and a quarter, like the one that's in plan Z. There's no crush collar eliminator for that. So I just cut a length of pipe to fit over the pinion. You cut it a little bit short, and then I just added shims until I attained that zero drag, zero play that I was looking for on that particular rear end, and, and that's it. You send it. So it's worth the extra time. If you're putting a rear end together, especially if you're doing off-roading, right, like, like rock crawling and stuff like that, or drag racing, because it'll happen with, with, a, with, a, with a faster race car. When you take your foot off the throttle in the traps and it suddenly goes from accelerating to decelerating, that's jamming the pinion bearings, the, the pinion back and forth, and that'll accentuate any play that may be in there. Uh, you do like rolling burnouts. When you let off your gas and you hear the tires screech, well, it's slamming the pinion forward, right? So if you're doing a high performance application uh, and heavy duty towing, a crush collar eliminator is always a good idea. Like I said, it's a shortcut. It's not something that it's not something that anybody should be proud of. This is not this is not a precision piece. It's a one-time only throwaway shortcut to save from having somebody with, with actual, you know, patience and 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 skill to set the rear properly on the assembly line. All right. I got to go put the draw shaft back in my truck. I hope you guys got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow. Sometimes I make these videos, and like as soon as I'm done making them, I say, oh, I should have mentioned this. Uh, Loctite. I forgot to mention Loctite. Loctite, if you get, if you look like a Chrysler or something that just has a regular fine thread nut on there, not a nylock and not an interference type thread, Loctite the hell out of that nut. All right, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow.